This episode of TechZilla is brought to you by Domain.com. Google Developer Conference, a.k.a. Google I.O., was held right here in San Francisco last week. And while we weren't on the list, Revision 3 CTO Rob DeMillo bought himself a ticket, and he's here to tell us all about Google I.O. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Patrick. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man who makes sure everything runs involving zeros and ones, including the delivery of your video. He works hard for the money. So I got to ask, what was what was the you know Google glasses, the the the, the strange ball that I just bought? <laughs> <laughs> um, Nexus Seven, you know, a whole day talking about the Chrome and the operating system. What was the high, what was the big highlight of the conference for you? Uh, probably the first day. So the first day was all about Android. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Android 4.1 Jelly Bean made its made its. Uh, debut, I guess. Um, they gave out all of the Jelly Bean-based products, which is the Nexus tablet, the, the Galaxy Nexus phone, the Nexus Q, everything with Nexus involved, basically. <laughs> uh, and the discussion of what was going into that operating system, what the roll-up times were. What was the big thing? I mean, you, we were talking about this earlier, and you said this feels like a 5.0 release to you, not a 4.1. What, what, what were the big differences? The big differences were that they essentially redesigned the user interface. Mm -hmm. They redesigned uh, the way voice dictation works. They redesigned, you know, there were a lot of major upgrades and releases uh, into all of the uh, uh, the OS. And it felt to me like a 5.0 release. It did not feel like a point, point 0.1 upgrade. So what's going on with, with voice commands? What they did was they moved the voice engine from the cloud into the client itself wow. so that if you are not connected to the internet, you can still dictate your email, your SMS messages, launch products, et cetera, et cetera. You wouldn't think there's actually enough power in a portable device to do that. Uh, I've, I've been in this business for 30 years. I don't understand how they did it. But they absolutely did do it. I've had uh, uh, both the tablet and the phone mm -hmm. running uh, all weekend, so I got a chance to play with Jelly Bean, which is on, on both products. Uh, it works beautifully. It works flawlessly. Um, they also added a component called Google Now, which is a, uh, a picture card-based system for displaying information that it finds based off of uh, what your voice activation huh. told it to do. So if you say, go to the airport, it will show you, uh, you know, a picture of San Francisco airport and the best way to get there and what the traffic routes are and all that stuff. Uh, and then in addition to that, they had a major release into their user interface, which, allowed, um, which allows the Android devices to behave in uh, sort of a very smooth, buttery fashion. They call the release butter for that, for that very reason. As in smooth as. As in smooth as. And uh, if, you, if you thought that um, 4.0 had smooth, fast interaction, 4.1 will absolutely blow you away. What's going on underneath that? Because traditionally, Android's looked a little stuttery compared sure. to the iOS. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you look at an iOS device, uh, what it does is whenever you touch the device, it stops all other processing in lieu of what you're doing um, inside the user interface. So if you move the window around or if you're calling up a dialog box or whatever it is that you're doing, um, you have complete priority. Android took a different route. It took a more um, uh, computer science-y route where the user interface is running inside of its own uh, thread, which is just a separate processing call inside of, inside of the operating system. So your user interface is competing uh, with all the other processing going on. And the only way to get around that really is to increase uh, the power of the device, which makes the device you know, more expensive. <laughs> so what they did in 4.1 was they changed the priority of the threading for uh, the user experience so that when you touch the, the Android screen, while the other processing is continuing in the background like it always was, it's at a reduced priority and doesn't use as much of the CPU. And the results are dramatic. Uh, the response on, uh, on the Jelly Bean interface is exactly the same as you'd see on an iPad. Wow. I wish you actually have one of the devices right up here. Is this the... Nexus 7? That's the Nexus 7. So that's a $200 device that they released uh, last week. You can pre-order it now, and it'll be out in uh, about a week or so. Uh, what this device is obviously intended to do com is compete with two different uh, Android devices in the market right now. One is the Kindle, uh, which uh, you can tell by just going to the home screen on the Nexus 7. Uh, shows you all of your media, shows you your, the, the books that you've purchased, all of your videos, exactly the way the Kindle does. So it puts the Google Play Store front and center. Uh, and then it steals from, from this little device here, which is the Galaxy Tab uh, 7, 
in fact that it has the same uh, sort of high-end processing power. Uh, the Nexus 7 is a quad-core device. Uh, it's very fast. It's very smooth. It's a, it's a joy to use. So. So you're pretty excited about it. I and like it a lot, actually. actually. 200, yeah, two hundred dollars. You you know you can't really go wrong. And it's got battery life for two hundred dollars. Yeah, it does. Uh, I've had it running all Saturday and Sunday before doing a charge. So the Nexus Q is probably the most. I I I, I don't get it. I, I, you, I, I you wouldn't be even, alone. The swirly top scares the hell out of me because I've already dropped it once. Mm -hmm. It's got like, do you say a 20 watt amplifier? 25 watt. 25 watt amplifier. So we've got optical output, we've got Ethernet, we've got HDMI output, excuse me, Ethernet, we've got uh, <laughs> the USB, Ethernet, HDMI, optical output, we've got the ability to support stereo speakers, uh, power stereo speakers, and it's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. It is. What is the point of this thing? The point of that thing is to provide an access point for all Google Play output uh, at any point in your home. Mm -hmm. If you have two or three of those things running, they will run in concert, very similar to the way Google does in party mode. Uh, and they will display the same video to different different television sets, or they will play the same audio to different sets of speakers. Uh, it is it is very very clearly a pre 1.0 device. Right. Um, there's a lot of updates that they can do to that to make it run better, smoother, faster. But the basic idea is they're trying to make an entrant into your living room, uh, and they're doing it in a very social way. It seems like a, it's a very trailing edge set top box. Kind of. It's, it's like a, a boxy it's, box. It's with a more trailing muscle. edge set top box that has the ability to leap over quite a few other boxes. I, I, I am not sure how this is going to get accepted in the marketplace. Uh, the price point is similar to a Sonos unit, so it's it's in the 300s. Wow. Uh, so it's an expensive unit. It's not it's not a Roku price device by any stretch of the imagination, but it has the ability to do more. There's a lot of processing in there, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I haven't played with this personally at home yet. Uh, plan on doing that this next weekend. But um, it, it's, it, it's overpowered for what you can do with it right now, which implies to me that there's going to be future releases. We can only hope, because right now it's Google Play, it's YouTube, no Netflix. Netflix, no Amazon Video on Demand. It seems like the overall theme of the conference was, hi, we're Google, and we want to control the media we sell to you on the devices yeah. you buy from yeah, us. Yeah, that was definitely a, you know, it was a, a move uh, to, to block out Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, because that's what Amazon does. They, they make devices specifically to sell uh, uh, media into their channel, and this is something similar. I believe also, and I could be wrong, but I believe also this is the first device physically manufactured by Google itself. Wow. I just don't get the swirly top. Uh, that's actually part of the, one of the more interesting things is it has no function right now, but there it is. Now they have, <laughs> so that, that implies future upgrade stuff. So uh, interestingly enough, there was a uh, in, in, as part of the the uh, the show they had a giant twenty foot version of this thing on a robot arm. There were three cues attached to that device, and as a conference member, you could go up and, and twiddle with this interface, and it caused that giant version of itself to move around and do funky things. So this is actually connected to some sort of uh, something that so they can get it's at. It's like one of those little USB volume controls in Belkin. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, thank you so much for taking the time. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob DeMillo, CTO, Revision3.com. That's where you can find more of his work. Ladies and gentlemen, there is more Techzilla coming right up, but before we do that, we got to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Need to pick up some domain names? Got a new business, a new blog, a new website? Maybe Heron's doing something exciting? Maybe a handful of redirects to your existing site? I am the best TV calibrator ever in the United States.com. You should be registering with Domain.com. We like Domain.com over here at TechZilla. They're affordable, they're reliable, they're easy to use. And unlike some other domain registrars, Domain.com doesn't support legislation that would cripple the internet. They're actually thinking about you. How nice is that? Hey, you know what? Domain.com, they get it. They've got an active social media presence on Twitter. You got a problem? At Domain.com or just pick up the phone and call them. Great customer support makes Domain.com a great place to do business. And if you need a new domain name, consider registering a new .com. Really, there's .whatever and .who and .lee and .foreign country that got taken over and dumped your registration. A .com name, though, a .com domain name, though, it's the original. And we all know it's the best. It's globally understood and immediately gives credibility to your website no matter what name you choose. Plus, if you want to invest in and sell domains, .coms have the highest aftermarket value. Did we tell you we like domain.com? Well, they like us, too, and they love you. You know how much? 
20% off. That's how much. We got an awesome coupon for you. Since Domain.com is back on TechZilla, they're bumping our coupon up to 20% off for a limited time. Use the coupon code TechZilla when you check out at Domain.com. You'll be helping keep the show on the air, and you'll be getting 20% off, folks. That's a big discount. Big time savings. Techzilla, give that Techzilla coupon code some love when you check out at domain.com. When you think domain names, think domain.com. And notice that's a dot com, not a dot. What was that?